And now to Jeffrey Barron, a segment that for him hits close to home. Jeffrey. Thanks, Phil. When I was a kid in Deerfield, where I grew up, a block from my house, there was a tree that had this funny bend in the trunk. You'll see a picture of it here in just a second. Now, we were told that this was an Indian trail tree, but we never knew really what that meant. So when I saw that a new book about Native American trail trees had been published, I was instantly curious to learn more. The book is called Native American Trail Marker Trees, trees, marking paths through the wilderness. And here to talk about the book and his three decades long study is author Dennis Downs. Dennis, welcome to Chicago tonight. Thank you. So let's Glad just be here. start out with the obvious questions. What is an, an Indian, a Native American trail marker tree? What is it for a lay person? For a lay person, Native American trail marker trees were a way of navigating through dense forest. And another purpose for them was a way of uh, marking areas where you would cross or ford a river. Well, now these don't grow naturally, no, right? They, are, they actually, the Native Americans shaped, made these? These are culturally altered living landmarks so shaped by the Native Americans. How did they put a bend in a tree? Uh, when the tree is very young, uh, mm -hmm. usually the oak family uh, was used in our area. It depends on where you come from. Mm -hmm. Different trees can be used in, in different areas. But the trees are very supple when they're young. So when they're two, three inches in diameter, it's fairly easy to bend them over mm -hmm. and to start the shaping process. And so then as they grow, as you can see in these old pictures, they just get bigger and bigger and they start growing up towards the sky. Right, and you remove the other branches. So okay, so here's the process. Sure. So walk me through this. What you're looking at here would be the first step that you would, that you would do. Uh -huh. You simply happens. would bend the tree over roughly four to five three to four or five feet off the ground mm -hmm. in an arch, and you leave it. You'd, you'd only be replacing one that existed. Mm -hmm. okay, unless so you were the first Next year you know, then, what, what starts to happen? Next year when you come by, you'll see Mother Nature will start putting buds up on that arch. Mm -hmm. She and does this all by herself. All you do is walk by, look at it. So would the Native American just set it and forget it, or were, they, or were they maintaining them over the years? All you do is stake it mm -hmm. for that first year. Next year you walk by. You'll see the buds coming up. You remove a couple, you just flick them with your thumb. Okay, so there's a little pruning they would do. It's about a minute, yes. Uh -huh. And here it's and getting then bigger. The third year when you come by, you can select whether it would be a single trunks were usually directional, what's referred to as a directional tree, mm -hmm. double trunks uh, location, and the same with uh, triple trunks. Now what's happened here? That would be the actual removal of what would have been the original top of the crown of the tree. Which at that point is going parallel to the ground. Right. So this new part becomes the trunk. This new part trunk. becomes the trunk. Okay. And actually there'll always be a difference between the diameter of the natural trunk mm -hmm. and the new limbs that shot forward, and which will tell you that it was shaped by man. Okay, so that was my question. How that's do you know the, what you're looking the, at a real right. a trail tree or just a tree that kind if of fell tree, over and started growing if up If a tree's again? just bent over in the forest, the shoots will be all over it. That, and they'll, it will never have the front of it removed. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the biggest difference. This mm -hmm. was a, a system that, you know, that gave them um, a trigger like an exit sign off of a main highway gives us a trigger, even though we so know they were where like we're exit going. exit signs. Yeah, some of them were paths, some of them were exit signs. And what were they pointing to? They could be pointing to things that the animal trails wouldn't take you to, in other words, the main Indian trails were a lot of them based on the buffalo traces, the oh, old okay. ancient trails. Okay. But buffalo don't get off of the trail to go find chert deposits or expose copper. Chert is? Chert is a viscous rock that you would use for your weapons, for your okay. tools. In other words, animals don't mine, not that we know of. Okay. And expose copper. In other words, uh, if you were taught by your father where this deposit was, you'd have a marker and you'd continuously mm -hmm. pass that knowledge on from your son to his son mm -hmm. and you'd replace these trees every two or three hundred years. That's the beauty ah. of it. These things will last, we know for a fact, two, three, four hundred years. Yeah, now where do you find these trees today? It's becoming more difficult because uh, in my lifetime the interstate highway uh, system obviously came in after World War II uh, which widened our streets from paths you know, there were 20, 30 feet wide to 60 foot lanes. And some trees were. And what I learned mm -hmm. uh, from older people that I did studies with, uh, Steve Young, who was from our, our region here in Northeastern Illinois, 
He said before that major highway system took effect in our area, the prevalence of the trees was you know, much greater. And you can't blame them. They had to remove these trees. But, but some widen. still exist in yes. this area? In, in the, well, here's, we see in Kenilworth, there's a until, tree. Uh, up until the recent times, this would have been the, the uh, Colmer tree, I believe, that I'm looking at. That's in Kenilworth? Yes, and that uh, tree, unfortunately, yes. did go down. Really? Um, yeah, these pictures were shot for uh, the uh, that, North Shore yes. show that I did yeah. about 10 years ago. I actually visited that as a Cub Scout. And, and this was this is gone now. This tree. This is gone. I see. And we the have another. Was, uh, was taking very good care of it. Uh -huh. um, Callahan, I believe, is his name. And I was brought back there. Um, I did a uh, show at the Grove, the historical landmark in Glenview, and let the Glenbrook North students come to see the trail tree exhibit. And one of the men there from Northbrook, Glenn Roberts, who was a chaperone, re made me aware again of the Comer tree that I'd seen as a, as a child. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not driving yourself when you're a Cub Scout, so that tree I hadn't visited since I was yeah. a boy. Yeah. Thanks to Glenn Roberts, I was reconnected mm -hmm. with that tree and able to photograph it again. Uh -huh. And we actually had a picture of one, I, I don't know if we've seen it yet, that's in Winnetka, I believe. And one of the things I loved about this is that the, the village sign in Winnetka has a trail tree. Oh. Uh, in the sign of the, the community of Winnetka, right? Winnetka has had a lot to do with the saving of trail marker trees and the recorded history of them. I'm actually shaping trail marker trees with the park superintendent. Okay, so now you actually are Bay making trail. new trees now, right? Yes. You've, you've been making trail I've marker for trees. For almost 30 years. How, how old's the oldest one you've been the oldest making? oldest one that that I have is uh, in his early 20s. And I well, had an older one, but it was hit in a storm uh, uh, and crushed by a giant tree. Uh, and so how big is the, the one you've been making? Um, I mean, the, the oldest one. The diameter, he would be about 18 feet high, and he's about, th I'd say, three inches, four inches For, in diameter. And that was 30 years ago, 20, 20 25 20, years 20, ago. So these take ago. a long this time. This is a newer one that we're looking at. Um, this is in Wisconsin. This is a different way of shaping them that mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying some of the different techniques. It's like anything you learn, the mm -hmm. longer you do something, the more you learn and the more you read. You know, we only have a, a, a minute or so, yes. and I want to say you're an artist by profession, right? Yes. And, and by training, and we have a sample of your work right here in the studio. Uh, this is an actual, you, you did a maquette of a, of a trail tree, right? Yes, here. this is the first bronze ever cast of a trail marker tree, according to Harry Spells, the uh, owner of the foundry, Art Casting of Illinois. Mm -hmm. And, and, and there's a gigantic version on the cover of your book, in right. fact. I don't know if we can see that there, but on the cover of your book is the life-size version of this uh, trail right. marker tree, which is now standing at the Lake County Discovery Museum. Right, right at the entranceway. So an enormous tree. Yes, and the exhibit will be in Antioch at the Lakes Region Historical mm -hmm. Society, December 3rd. Mm -hmm. um, along with Great. Kanonazo, the Indian expert that worked in the book. Well, that's all the time so. we have. Thank you so much for coming into the studio. Appreciate it. Dennis, it's been a pleasure. Like uh, the, again, the book is called Native American Trail Trees, Marking Paths Through the Wilderness. You can learn about the trees and view a photo gallery on our website. Phil, back to you.